Hello everyone, I am Simran Kaur and today I will be teaching you your next science chapter which is chapter 7, Getting to Know Plants. This is part 1 in which we will cover half of the topics. So today you will get to know about plants, stem and roots. Now when you look around you see many green beautiful plants. What are plants? Plants are the living organisms which cannot move from their place and they can produce their own food by the process called photosynthesis. So they are the primary source of energy as we all are directly or indirectly dependent on them for our food. Now you have seen that some plants are very tall, some are very short, some are medium in height, then some plants bear flowers, some plants do not bear flowers. Then we see variation in the shape, size, color of leaves. So by all this we mean that variation exists among plants. If we take our example, I am a human, you are a human, but there are variations in between us. Like I am taller than you, there might be difference in our skin tones. So same happens with plants, variation exists among plants. Now have a look on the different parts of plant. This is flower, you have seen flowers are very colorful and very attractive. Then flower is a reproductive part of a plant. Then next is leaf. Leaves are known as kitchen of the plant because leaves produce food. Then stem, stem gives support, it gives structure to the plant. Then roots, roots help in absorption of water and minerals from the soil. Now parts of plant are divided into two system, shoot system and root system. So the underground part of a plant is known as root system and it consists of roots. Here you can see the roots these are present underground. So it is a part of our root system and the part which lies above the ground is known as shoot system and it consists of flower, leaf, fruit, stem, branches, all these are part of our shoot system. Are you getting it? Then on the basis of characters of plants, we have uh, classified plants into three categories which are herbs, shrubs and trees. We will study each of them one by one. So we are starting with herbs. You have seen coriander leaves, mint leaves. So the plant of coriander, mint, they comes under the category of herbs. Herbs, they, the plants which have green and soft stems. The plants which have green and soft stem, that means by bending it, you can easily break the stem. Those plants are known as herbs. They are usually short and may not have many branches. If you can see this, this is potato plant, this is wheat plant, these are herbs. Example, more examples are potato, turnip, wheat. Then next category is shrubs. These are uh, taller than herbs but shorter than tall trees. You have seen the plant of tulsi that comes under the category of shrubs. Stem is hard but not very thick. Stem branches out near the base like in this case rose plant, lemon plant, tulsi. The stem branches out, uh, branches out near the ground, near the base. Examples lemon, rose bushes. Then third category is trees. We see hundreds of trees around us, mango tree, then neem tree, banyan tree. So trees are very tall, very huge and they, uh, their stem is very thick, hard and woody. Now if you have observed that some plants cannot stand upright, like in case of money plant, that plant cannot stand upright because those plants have very weak stem. So that's why those plants are known as weak plants and we have divided into two parts, I mean creepers and climbers. The two category of weak plant are uh, creepers and climbers. 
creepers if you have seen the melon plant what a melon plant or grass that is very common that is example of creeper because the stem is very weak it cannot stand upright so the plant spreads on the ground so those plants are known as creepers because uh, stem is thin delicate and weak grow prostrate on the ground that means horizontally they spread on the ground example pumpkin grass melon then the next category is climber money plant is the very common example of climber you have seen money plant cannot stand upright we need to give it some support so the plants which need support to stand upright are known as climbers long and fe uh, flexible stem which coils easily it take the support of nearby objects it can be any other tall tree any pillar or any other plant then examples are money plant peas jasmine this is climber which is grape vine this is cucumber plant okay now the next topic of our chapter roots roots these are part of which system root system because they lie underground this uh, root is an underground part of a plant these are non green structures okay you can see these are covered with roots are covered with soil these are non green part of a plant now types of roots we have basically two types of root tap root and fibrous root in tap root a main root is present as you can see in this figure this is our main root and on the lateral side you can see lateral roots branches out so this type of root is known as tap root the main root is known as tap root while small branches arising from it are called as lateral roots this is our tap root the main root and these are lateral roots some examples these are the vegetables which have tap roots like carrot beet parsnip turnip then the second type of root is fibrous root in this no main root is present all roots are equal in size you can see they are equal in size they are thin fiber like structures here you can see these are thin fibers like structure and we cannot see any main root so the cluster of equal sized roots arising from base of the plant are called fibrous root like this is the wheat plant it has fibrous root more examples are maize paddy barley those all plants have fibrous type of roots now let's have a look on few functions of roots what is the role of roots in the structure of plant first anchoring the plant you can see these are the roots of this huge tree so they help uh, this tree to fix on the ground these roots spread out on the ground and help the plant to fix on the ground and roots keep this plant uh, standing upright as you can see this tree is standing upright so these roots help in that another function is absorption of water and nutrients from the soil as you know that like we human beings we also need water minerals food similarly this plant also need water and mineral for the proper growth so from where does this get it from the soil with the help of roots so soil uh, this root helps in absorption of water and minerals which are present in the soil and you can see this arrow the, these arrows shows absorption of water and minerals and it is going upward to the, uh, to the rest part of the plant another function is it prevent soil erosion the roots you can see uh, around these root soil particles are present so these roots help the soil particles bind together it keep the soil particles together and which results in prevention of soil erosion what is soil erosion blowing away of soil particles with the help of wind or water 
Now modifications of root. First, food is stored in roots. Now there are few plants, few vegetables in which food is stored in their roots. And examples are radish, carrot, turnip, beetroot, sweet potato. Climbing roots. In few plants, roots help the plant to climb any object. Object can be any nearby wall, pillar or any tall tree. So in case of money plant, roots help in climbing. As you can see this money plant is taking support of this wooden log. Then third, supporting roots. In plants like sugarcane, uh, then bamboo, the roots help in, uh, sorry, roots give extra support to our plant. Like this is plant of sugarcane. Then breathing root, uh, in few plants, roots help in respiration. The roots of plant help in breathing. Example is rhizophora. So that was all about the roots. Now we will discuss about stem. Stem comes in which system? Root system or shoot system? It comes in shoot system because it lies above the ground. So stem provides the structure, it provides the support to the plant and stem helps in transportation of water, minerals and fruit in the whole plant like it carries water and mineral from the uh, roots to the upper part of the plant and the food which has been synthesized by these leaves is carried by this stem and goes to the rest of the part of our plant then stem okay main aerial part of shoot it bears plant parts like leaves fruits flowers and buds you can see the center line which you can see is stem of our plant and it bears flower, leaf, fruit and buds. It is green in color due to the presence of chlorophyll. At the beginning it is green in color because of the green pigment and that pigment is known as chlorophyll. So in the initial stage this stem can also show photosynthesis because it has chlorophyll in it. And it grows towards light. Where there is light, it will grow towards that direction. Now these are few termino uh, terminology in our stem. Node and internode. Now what is node? Node is, node is the place on our stem where branch arises. Look at this part. This is node and at this point are branches arising. So this point is known as node. Similarly, this is also a node because from here one branch is also arising. And the part between these two nodes is known as internode. The place between these two points is known as internode. Yes, it will be more clear in this picture. This is node this is node and this part is known as this region of stem is known as internode another few terms apical or terminal bud the point at which it ends is known as apical or terminal bud and this bud helps uh, in the height of the plant it helps in increasing the height of the plant the next is axillary or lateral bud. In this picture, can you see this is axillary or lateral bud. Then axil, it is the angle between the stem and the branch arising. This is known as ex, uh, axil and the bud which is present between this axil is known as axillary bud. Then this is leaf, you have all seen it and the center part is stem. Here comes your first internal question which you have to write on page 92. Define node, internode, apical bud and axillary bud. Mark the answer of node, internode and apical bud in keywords. Note it is a point on the stem from where a leaf comes out. Internode it is a part of the stem between two nodes. Apical bud 
the bud at the tip of the plant and for axillary bud come back to page 92 and mark the answer buds are present in the axils of leaves too these buds are called axillary bud so now i will show you all these parts of stem okay now this part is note because you can see a branch is arising out from here then again this is our node this is this point is node this is node and what is internode here you can see this point is our node because a branch is arising here then this point is a node this is a node again here it is a node we have so many nodes in this stem now what is internode the place the region between this node and this node that means this area is known as internode this is also internode the place between this node and this node now in this plant where is apical bud this the bud at the top is our apical or terminal bud now look at few functions of stem it helps in carrying absorbed water and minerals from roots to the other parts of plant by upward movement. We know that this stem helps in transportation. Transportation means it carries water and minerals from the roots to the upper part of the plant and it carries the food which has been prepared by our leaves to the rest part of our plant. So food manufactured by leaves travels downwards to roots by the stem. It keeps the plant upright as it is providing support to our plant. So that's why in case of weak plants, our stem was weak. So that's why our uh, plant couldn't have stand upright. Then it bears leaves, flowers and fruits. Now modification of stem storage of food in few plants like potato ginger the food which is manufactured by leaves of the plant is stored in the stem of the plant then photosynthesis in plants like cactus the stem of cactus produces food so the stem helps in means the stem shows photosynthesis then it provides support yes the, it is the main part of our plant, so stem provides uh, structure, it provides support to our plant. Now, what is the importance of stem? First, provide us food. In plants like onion, ginger, garlic, the stem of these plants provide us food, which we eat. Then, it provides us fibers such as jute fibers. Yes, the stem of many plants provide us fibers the very common example is jute fibers and you have seen the jute objects the jute bags then it is used for making furniture like uh, the timber plants which uh, this in which the stem is very hard and woody that the stem of that plant is used in making furniture in making beds sofas then secrete resins and gums which are used in paints and varnishes like so, the stem of some plants secrete resins and gums and these two substances are used in making paints and varnishes what is varnish it is a thin coating which is done on any woody object then it provides us medicine few plants provide us medicine like medicine of malaria and so many ayurvedic medicines we get from the stem of many plants so i hope you understood the part one of our chapter thank you